very good morning, everyone. It's great to have you here today in what is a glorious Sunday morning. It was great walking to church today. Though wearing black, I was very, very warm in the sun, and that is a great problem to have. I'm sure we're going to all enjoy the rest of our day. And we are coming before God to praise him on what is Trinity Sunday. A day when we praise the power of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three in one. In a moment of silence, let us still ourselves before God in our call to worship. Let us give to the Lord the glory of his name. We shall worship God in holy splendour. His voice thunders over the waters and shakes the wilderness. All in his church cry glory. May God give us strength. Let us seek his blessing of peace. Let us listen to hymn 111. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Let us approach God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all goodness, you gave your Son for the life of the world and sent your Spirit that your love might abide in us. We approach you now in prayer, bowing our heads before our God, three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who bonds us together in our worship to you. 
glory to God in the highest. You gift each of those who commit their lives to you, the Holy Spirit, our helper, making us whole, enabling us to dwell more deeply in your heavenly love. You revive us, shining on us the light of life, satisfying our longing hearts. Today on Trinity Sunday, we praise you, our source of all being. Loving God, we know that you are always there to lead us, that through the cross you sent the Spirit to teach us and guide us in your ways. But we confess, Father, that we have stumbled. When your ways have not been of the world's, there have been times when we have felt too embarrassed to speak up or to act as the Spirit has prompted us, making excuses. We are sorry, God, for when we haven't trusted you, for when we have failed to put our faith into action. Jesus invites us to receive new and abundant life through his death on the cross, where there is no more guilt or shame, where sin is blotted out. Awaken in us your threefold presence in the world this day, God, that we may share your love with others as freely as you have done for us in Christ. Help us to draw closer to Jesus so that we might follow in the footsteps of our Saviour, who taught us to say these words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, boys and girls, instead of Jake this week, you put me, come here to the back, because I have to get you to do something. Oh, look at that face. Oh, my goodness. Well, this morning, as Jake told us all, is a very special day. It's called Trinity Sunday. Now, what is Trinity Sunday all about? Well, Trinity is all about God. And it's difficult to understand as adults, and it's even more difficult as kids to understand that one person can have three. Three goes into one, doesn't it? The show. You see them to one another. No. But God does. You get God the Father, and God the Son, who is Jesus, and you get the Holy Spirit. You may hear us use these names sometimes in church and prayers, or when we baptize somebody. But it is quite hard to understand that God is three people. But it's really not, because I'm one person, but I'm made of different parts. I've got two hands, two arms, two eyes, one mouth that does a lot of rubbish talking, two feet, two legs. So there's more parts to me than just one, isn't there? And that's like God, but He's special. He's only got three parts. And it's called Trinity because that means three. Try, which is the first part of the word, means three. Like a three feel of light. Who's ever been in a three feel of light? You hand up, I saw the old people, <laughs> kids over there, and the unity means one, everyone together. Now, it really is wonderful, and it's okay if we really don't understand it, but we get to understand it over time. Can you tell me anything that is made of one that has three parts? Anybody, put your hand up if you know anything that's one that made of three parts. Only three parts. 
doesn't involve this whole issue. It's not these people I'm talking about. But one day, there was a group of people in church, and they decided they wanted to paint the church. And they were all asked, have you got a favourite colour? And they all thought about it, and then they went into the groups. And this man said, as well as painting it, we want to paint a new stained glass window. So what colours did you put in the window? So what is your colour, what colour do you think God is to you? What colour do you think God is? Is he red? Yeah, I don't think he's red. Yellow? Blue? Orange? He's no, he's no colour. God's not a colour. Mm. I think he could be. I think he could be a colour. So the people said to themselves, right, we went to these three groups and we'll talk. For the first group sat down and they thought to themselves, right, we want a window that's going to reflect, show us God. So we want to put clear glass in it. Now I would want to put clear glass in the window. Well, so they could see through it. And so they could see people. And so they could see the creation of God in me. And it also reminded them that God is everywhere. He's in the wind. He's blowing through the wind. The Spirit is blowing through the wind. So they wanted to clear glass. So that was fine. And then the next group up said, well, we really don't want clear glass. They want something nice and bright, and they chose yellow. Nice, bright colour, isn't it? Why? Because Jesus is a light of the world. And it shines through the window, as it goes through that window, it's full of yellow. And that's Jesus' rays shining through the the world. And this other group said, well, we really don't like any of those colours. We want blue. Why do you want blue? They said, well, blue reminds us of the power of the sea and blue of the sky and God made the sea and he made the sky so that's why you want that so in the background sat the artist who was going to do this and she stood up and said I could draw it and this is what I come up with so she drew this picture and in the picture she had the three colours the clear or the white the yellow and but what happens when you put all the colours together? That's the green. They turn green. And in the middle of the window, there's green. So three do go into one, don't they? Three makes green. So the jury put the window made, and then it went, and every suddenly they could look at it and see all the colours that they had suggested, realising that three colours do go into one. And they make God. Do you think we can make God this morning? Do you think we can try? So we've got three colours. What colours are? Clear. Clear. Right. So if I put it in there, what's going to happen? It's going to stay exactly the same, isn't it? That's not like one. What colour is that? Yellow. So we put yellow in here. And I did see yellow there on the road. I didn't have any sleep, but I came to the rest. Now what colour is that? So what happens after that here? You know, you know what happened? Watch this. And I had to test the whole nature of it. But I wasn't very sure. So that's yellow. You sure it's yellow? What's that? What's that? Green. So three going to one. Magic. Not really. That's chemistry. That's science for you. But God is around about us all the time. Now, our vision of God is different. My vision is different from yours. But at the end of the day, we put all these visions together and we have one God, one Father, one Son. And he's beautiful, and he's wonderful, and he's long. Let's see a short page. Dear God, we know that we cannot fully understand how 
great and how wonderful you are. But we thank you for your everlasting love. We thank you for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity of persons, even though they are still one. Help us to learn more about you and the great love that you have for each one of us. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our children's up this morning is Hannah 142, which I don't know at all, and I don't think we'll have it in here. It is called A Small Thing Like a Healing Mark. Let's listen to the three for us. from Isaiah 6, reading from verses 1 to 8. God calls Isaiah to be a prophet. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on his throne, high and exalted, and his robe filled the whole temple. Around him flaming creatures were standing, each of which had six wings. Each creature covered its face with two wings and its body with two and used the other two for flying. They were calling out to each other, Holy, Holy, Holy. The Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the world. The sound of their voices made the foundation of the temple shake and the temple itself became filled with smoke. I said, There is no hope for me. I am doomed because every word that passes my lips is sinful and I live among people whose every word is sinful and yet with my own eyes I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the creatures flew down to me carrying a burning coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with the burning coal and said, This has touched your lips, and now your guilt is gone, and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? I answered, I will go, send me. And our second scripture reading is from Romans chapter 8, reading verses 12 to 17. 
life in the spirit. So then, my friends, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to, for if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children. And by the Spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people. And we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. May God add his blessing to these readings of his holy word. And your next hymn is CH4112, God, whose almighty word. a best friend. If you do, their name will spring to mind in an instant. If you have to think about, well, maybe you're spoilt for choice, or perhaps there's no one you would consider to be that close with. I have a best friend, and her name is Elsie. But we haven't been best friends all of my life. In fact, at different points of my life, my best friend has changed, which sort of makes it sound like my best friends have went up and down the ranks through the years. But what I mean by that is that as I have grown up, 
I have felt closer to some friends than others as I've journeyed through adulthood, work life and beyond. My mother used to say that you can count your real friends on your one hand. But as a young adult, the more people I knew and thought of as friends or even pals, the more I felt like I was living my hashtag best life. The more people I knew, well, the more invites I would get to birthday parties and celebrations, lunches and dinners and even nights out in the town. The more friends I had on Facebook, well, the more I felt like I was someone. Someone who was able to post selfies with my friends and showing that I was someone who others wanted to be with. If you've ever watched the movie Mean Girls, well, I definitely wasn't part of a clique like that. But as a young adult, I depended on others liking me, fitting in, to be able to live that life that I thought looked the part. So that on a Monday morning in work, when a colleague would ask, how was your weekend, Jade? Well, I had exciting stories to tell. But I can tell you today that I can count my real friends on my one hand. And it's because I've changed. I've been a Christian all of my life. But when I chose to devote myself to God, when I chose to put his plan above my own, well, my priorities changed. My worth no longer came from others liking me, but as a child of God, as a daughter of the King of all kings. The truth is that living for God became my top priority. And with that brought great freedom to my life. You see, the more I realized how loved and worthy I was to God, the more I felt like my true self, no longer needing the acceptance of others, free to just be me, to love and be loved. I now desire in my friendships that same authenticity that I have in my relationship with God, my Father. Elsie and I have been best friends for six years. Yet it feels like we've known each other a lot longer than that. In fact, we don't actually call each other best friends. We call each other sisters. And for the record, I'm the wee sis. We aren't family by blood, but we are through love. What makes this friendship so special to me is that we genuinely care for one another. And I'm talking about that sort of care where we're journeying with one another. When something happens to one of us, the other feels it, whether good or bad. Each of our own families have extended to the other and her son and daughter I call my nephew and niece. Elsie and I are invested in one another. We walk alongside each other. We aren't interested in just the highlights of one another's life. We are interested in all the details. And I can say that I'm very thankful for those free phone minutes on my mobile contract. Whilst best friends can change family well they are here to stay through the good and bad through those days when you're not looking your best and those days when you are and in celebration and in sorrow 
there's a sense of security that comes with those that we call family, whether blood or not. They're in it for the long haul. In our Old Testament reading today of Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8, Isaiah is feeling anything but secure before God. In all the majestic splendor of God, Isaiah is feeling small, guilty, guilty before the great I am. Isaiah says in verse 5, there is no hope for me. I am doomed because every word that passes my lips is sinful. And I live among a people whose every word is sinful. And yet, with my own eyes, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. In the company of God, Isaiah realizes that his life and those around him have anything but honored God. He's regretful. He's ashamed. But God grants him forgiveness, saying, and now your guilt has gone and your sins are forgiven. And it is now with this forgiveness that Isaiah hears God's call to be his messenger. He says in verse 8, Then I heard the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Whom will be our messenger? I answered, I will go. Send me. As I realized what was important in the presence of God and now prioritized God's will in his life, he wanted to serve God. More often than not, like Isaiah, we too will be aware of the areas in our life, well, that aren't quite glorifying God. The way perhaps we speak or act at times that are not reflecting the fruits of the Spirit. And we'll be able to identify that in others too. But it's only when we are in God's presence do we feel that urge, that motivation to live out God's will here on earth, to change and follow Christ, bringing everything to light, laying it at the foot of the cross. Through Christ, we are able to confess the ways in which we have wronged God, hurting ourselves and hurting others too. And we receive forgiveness for them all. In repentance, we are then able to hear God's call more clearly in our lives too, guiding us into a new way of life in the presence of God. And it is then that we join in with heaven praising Holy, 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 the Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the world. Today is Trinity Sunday and the text from Isaiah is often used on a day like today. The Lord asked, whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? pointing to the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at work. When I was reading a commentary for today's service, the first line read, the doctrine of the Trinity is notoriously hard to understand. But thankfully, I kept on reading. The doctrine of the Trinity is our core Christian belief, that we worship one God in three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all whom are God. 
And so today, the first Sunday after Pentecost, we aren't celebrating an event like last week where the Holy Spirit is coming into the disciples, marking the birth of Christ's church. Today, we are celebrating the doctrine of the Trinity as our core Christian belief. Today, on what is a glorious day, we are praising God for the majestic splendor, his power over all creation, his worthiness of our praise today. Today, we celebrate that our God, who sits on the throne above all, yet came down to walk with us, to save us, so that he could be with each one of us every single day. The Trinity, yes, is full of mystery, and that is what we celebrate today. It's a love that we can't really understand because it's above and beyond. It's higher, it's deeper, it's wider than any expectation of love that we have in our own lives. It's a spiritual experience that carries us through every day and leads us to bring praise to God through our worship. Today, we celebrate that by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God's love reaches us everywhere. In Paul's letter to the Roman church in Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17, Paul is telling the church that they must remain in the Spirit that they must depend on the helper, the Spirit, to guide them in their everyday matters. That trusting in the Spirit for them and for us must be a way of life. Paul opens our Gospel reading in verse 12 by saying, So then, my brothers and sisters, we have an obligation but it is not to live as our human nature wants to. Paul knows that to be Christ followers, we must each remain in God's spirit in order to have life in its fullness. For when we are in the spirit, God makes all things possible. The Holy Spirit is then able to equip us in the road ahead because we become adopted into God's family through the Spirit. So I'd like us to just pause for a moment here to think about what that means for you. What does it mean to be called a son of God, God's son and God's daughter? What does it mean for you to know that you can cry out Father to the God that sits on the highest throne above all, whom angels adore, who created the universe and everything in it? What does it mean that God thinks of you so worthy to be called his own? who cares for you as intimately as a father does for his child. When we come before Jesus in repentance, we are forgiven because Jesus paid the price for us on the cross. And in that forgiveness, God the Father showers us in love and gifts us the Holy Spirit the helper, so that he will always be with us. In God, we have a security that we are his family. And he wants that to mean something to you. 
from the moment we are born, we are searching for security. We want to belong. We need to know who we can trust. And it is there that we call home. Paul says in verse 15, the Spirit makes you God's children. And by the Spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my Father. We have security in our relationship with God because we belong to him. He is our Father. And the good news is this intimate relationship with the Father is available to all who put their trust in Christ. And as adopted into God's family by the Spirit, we become heirs of God, receiving all the benefits that come with being in his family, along with Jesus. What Paul is giving to the Roman church here in his letter is perspective. No matter what they faced ahead, they are God's children, God's sons and God's daughters. And what that means is they belong to the God who sits on the highest throne, whom Jesus died for. And the Spirit will carry them throughout their life here on earth. God's love will never leave them. This reminder from Paul is refreshing for us because as we go through suffering in our own lives, albeit in relationships, health, everyday matters, as heirs of God, we are with Christ in the Spirit, benefiting through all the blessings of Christ and also enduring in the suffering with him. For we are his family in it for the long haul. Under his care, we have hope and we have peace. Whenever you feel like, oh, it's too difficult to change the way you walk or the way you speak, you're too set in your ways at this point. Paul reminds us in this letter that we have an obligation not to live in our human nature, but to live in the Spirit. God doesn't promise us that there will be no hardship to face in this new life in the Spirit. But what he does guarantee us is that he is with us. The Son of God suffered and was brought to glory and God will be victorious in our lives too when we devote ourselves to him. For in the Spirit... The devil has lost and God's love has won. In Christ, we belong to God. In the spirit, we no longer have to be fooled to believe that our value comes from what someone else thinks of us. Our identity comes as sons and daughters of the Father in whom we give all glory. God's love in the Spirit has that power to change us forever more. So today we celebrate that we worship the one God in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We come to praise our holy God, who is so awesome and majestic, so powerful, and yet is the same God that we cry out to as Father. Today, we give glory to the God whose love knows no limits and who reminds us today 
that we are family and that you are worthy to be his messenger. Let us pray. Holy God, we come in thanksgiving for all the ways in which your love has touched and shaped our lives. We praise you for your endless grace through your Son, Jesus, who transforms our lives to live anew in the Spirit. Help us this day, Lord, to hear your call, to listen to your voice as you guide us forward to do your will here on earth. We rejoice today with all the angels singing, Holy, 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 the Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the world. We love because you first loved us. Amen. Let us now listen to hymn 252, as a fire is meant for burning. We will now uplift our offering. Holy God, your love overflows in the gift of your Spirit. Bless these gifts that we offer, that they may spread your blessing in a world of hurt and need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now Iris will lead us in our prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Thank you, Iris. Let us pray. God our Father, you bring light into darkness and hope to our world. Your Son Jesus brings comfort to those suffering and a full life for all. The Holy Spirit brings joy to our hearts and everyday miracles of change in our world. We come to worship you, praise you, and pray that you would conspire to make us one with you. 
for the world you so deeply love. Eternal God, we think of those who have to shelter from violence in their country, those who have had to flee from their homes, and we think of those in our own community who experience violence under their own roof, whether emotional or physical. We pray that our destructive and violent ways in the world would cease. Through the reconciling love of Christ, grant peace in the world, we pray. Help us to live in harmony with one another, where each of us are loved and feel valued and worthy as your children. For we are each precious in your sight. Conspire to make us one with you, for the world you so deeply love. And we pray for those who are suffering from loss today, whether loss of a loved one, loss of a relationship, or a loss of a friendship. Where there is brokenness, we pray for healing, Lord. May we depend on you through the challenging times of life, knowing that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And for those suffering in grief, Father, we pray that they would know the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding. We take a moment to bring all those in our hearts and minds to you. We pray for the mission of your church, Jesus, that empowered by your spirit, we may proclaim the good news of the age and the world you so dearly love. Help us to remain relevant to the needs of our community and beyond. Equip us to join in your mission of blessing all in your image. We pray that as the body of Christ, our family would grow and bear the pr fruits of your spirit so that all might know that your love lives on through each of us, so that all might know that we worship a living God who rules now and forevermore and who waits for each of us to come home. Conspire to make us one with you for the world you so deeply love. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we praise you, O God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, friends, and welcome to our service on another bright and warm sunny morning. Whether you're here in person, viewing online or listening on the telephone later today, I do hope that the warmth and brightness of the day has been reflected in our worship, even at a social distance. A recording of the service via our Facebook page and the Dialer Sermon service will be available later this afternoon. Thanks this morning to Jade for the conduct of the worship, to Colin for his college talk, to Liz for her reading, and Iris for the prayer. Also to Billy, Neil and May for their work as a production team and the post-production work which will follow. Those who are, I was going to say those who hear, but those who listen to the intimations will realise it is a, an excellent name on that list today uh, and it's a fond welcome to Billy Campbell who's joined the media team and he's shadowing Neil up in the gallery to learn the ropes. Thank you very much, Billy. There were some very important choices before the General Assembly this year. Video highlights of the proceedings of the major debates are still available on the Church of Scotland web website at the link shown in the order of service. BBC Scotland Channel 9, which is available in Freeview, will also broadcast a short bulletin of the proceedings at 10.30pm tonight. On the health front, I can tell you that John Cunningham is still ill at home, but he's improving uh, day by day. David Buchanan, too, is recovering well. He's putting on in weight and he's getting back to, to normal. So to all who are ill at home, our prayers for a prompt and full recovery. <coughs> However, I'm saddened to tell you that our dear friend, Jill Moore, dealing with the uh, limiting aspects of Parkinson's and fighting off COVID has now developed a very serious blood related condition and is now receiving palliative care. She's been well cared for by the statutory health authorities 
and surrounded by the support and comfort of a loving family. May the bond of love in our personal and corporate prayers surround them at this time. And finally, in the domestic healthcare front, the usual warnings uh, when the service closes, we would ask that you leave the sanctuary starting at the rear of the church and working forward. Any used face masks can be deposited in the waste bins provided. Please use the hand sanitizer and remember to maintain that two meter distance even as you share in conversation outside the church. And finally, remember stay safe, stay calm, stay praying and God bless you all. And finally as our service draws to a close, let us reflect on the stirring words of our last hymn CH4110, to God be the glory. I will just say that in that last hymn, I actually had to underscore each word, glory be to God the Father, because it's so difficult not to say to God be the glory. But forever which way we're singing, we are or listening, we are glorifying God. And that's what we're here to do. As we walk onward with God, three in one, may we be called once more to faith by a rock and redeemer, God the Father sent again to meet the need of the world through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus the Son, and inspired anew by the gusting winds of our restless provoker, the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon each one of us and everyone whom we love this day and forevermore.